coffee break with me. Woo! Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. How are you today? Today I'm here with a Get Ready With Me and I guess you can say I'm in a hurry. Maybe not a big hurry, but a little bit of a hurry. Or just a little scotch of a hurry. Um, I need to have lunch with a friend of mine. Um, I think... <laughs> you guys know when you make plans with someone like way far in advance and then you like don't really check in um, if it's like still on or rather um, you say like you kind of get left off in mid conversation uh, <laughs> on where it's going to be or what time <laughs> that's kind of what I got going on right now but you know this is a really dependable friend so I'm not worried. Either way, I gotta put my face on, right? So, first thing we're gonna do is take the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. I know I've been using this in all of my recent Get Ready With Me's, but I swear you guys, it's the best primer for summer because I told you guys in a previous Get Ready With Me, I feel like it just like locks in my foundation. It almost like it seals it onto your face, you know, like it sticks on. Um, which is good because it's summer and you don't want your makeup melting off. So it kind of creates almost like a, I don't know, like it kind of locks it in place. Someone actually said that it makes your makeup waterproof and transfer proof, but wouldn't it have to go on top of your makeup to do that? I don't know. I can totally see it, how it's not transferring and stuff like that. But the other thing is it's not one of those makeup, uh, makeup products that, allow you for um, easy cover-up or retouching. So if you did your face, whatever, you did your primary foundation, everything, and then a couple hours later you want to retouch, it's not very accommodating for that because you can tell exactly where you wipe it or where you blot it. It almost creates like a demarcation line where you, where you almost wipe it. So that's not very cool. Um, so today we're going to use a lot of new products and it's uh, mostly because of my tan. <laughs> Okay, I don't think that's a joke anymore, but I'm actually, I'm actually kind of tan. If you guys saw my Mommy Parole vlog, you saw my, um, my hilarious tan. And so, it's weird, because, like, my shoulders are super dark, my back is super dark, and then, like, my neck and my chest are not. I don't know. My, apparently, I need a class on how to put on sunscreen or how to dress <laughs> when I'm going to be out in the sun. Um, you guys hear my voice? Honestly, you guys, I think I'm one of those people that like gets stress illnesses. And isn't that a thing? Like um, you're stressed out so you make yourself sick or rather you stress out. I think it, I don't think it's, oh, you're stressed so you force your body into illness. I think it's you're stressed out so you don't take care of yourself. So you forget to take like your vitamins or to eat right or to even eat and then you're more susceptible to illness. I think that's how it works. Anyway, so what I was saying about my tan is I don't have any foundations that I can use that'll match my awesome tan. You guys wanna see my tan? Look at this. You guys see that? You probably can't see because of the bright lights, but you see that like line across my thigh? Um, so yeah, you guys are probably like, holy dinosaur, you're so big. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of you guys are new to my channel and you don't know I'm a giant, so there's that. Um, yeah, so I have to use new products, and these are products I've never used before, and I have to go out, so if they totally blow or ruin my makeup, like, I'm screwed. I can't decide if I want to do the Clinique BIY Blend It Yourself Pigment Drops, or the new Even Steven Whip Foundation from Ben, uh, The Balm. Now, with this guy, I kind of want to use this one, but with Whip Foundations, they're usually very creamy, very heavy, because they're, uh, full coverage foundations. But with this one, I have to mix it into something. And I still don't know the common ratio. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it could take work. So I'm going to try my best to use the whip foundation, but, like, as little of it as possible. It's one of those that, you know, whip foundations. And I'm totally speaking out of turn because I'm not, I haven't actually tried it. But whip foundations are, like, super-duper crazy extra crazy coverage. And you know what? It also, ha it's like a jug, like a little jar. So it's like, put your finger in there? Huh. I mean, I guess I, I can use, uh, maybe like the back of my, let me clean this off. Let me sanitize it with a wet paper towel. <laughs> so, um, I wonder, actually, let's see this. Um, 
light airy souffle like texture you've got a foundation that's truly whipped a perfect complexion is par for the course of this ultra pigmented formula a little goes a long way eight long lasting shades a little goes a long way danny you've been warned okay so i'm just gonna take that much i guess uh i feel like i'm already overdoing it oh you know what did i put on corrector oh yeah i did Okay, I'm just going to use my beauty blender, and I think with wet foundations, um, it's better to use your hands or a foundation brush, um, but you know how I am, you guys. Thug life. Always thugging it up. Um, oh, this is really nice. Holy full coverage, but it's really nice. You guys know I'm like slightly, um, what's the word? My preference is not full coverage. Oh, and I'm using the shade medium. It's so weird, you guys. I'm like, I'm gonna try light medium. That's probably my shade. And it was like way too light. I was like, no, could it be? Am I actually sort of tan? It's kind of nice. It's kind of a nice feeling. It's not a nice feeling not knowing what foundation shade you are though. I'm not used to that kind of pressure. Anyway, so today I, uh, I'm gonna have lunch with a friend and then I wanna go to church but I still don't know what time I'm gonna be able to make it to mass. The cool thing is that the, um, the parish that I go to has a lot of time options. So you can make it work if you wanna be there. If you wanna say hi to Jesus, make it work. I don't know you guys, this foundation is so good. Oh, I may have found my new favorite full coverage foundation. I wonder, because of the viscosity, you know, how it's so thick, if I could mix it into, um, you know, like my, uh, you know how I mix everything. I wonder if it would work well getting mixed into, um, like, an illuminator or um, a lighter weight foundation just so it's not so heavy. But it's really nice. It's like, it's, it's part of my skin. It's not one of those that just sits on top and looks almost like a mask. So, so far so good. I'm obviously gonna have to wear it throughout the day and see what happens because it could totally melt in the next two hours and make me look like a hot mess, more than usual. Um, so we'll see. Oh man, that's kind of nice. That is kind of nice. I also want to use the Naked Heat Palette in this video. I already have another Get Ready With Me using it. I wanna use it again. I wanna use it again as much as I can in front of you guys so that you guys can see it in action. Um, I don't think I'm going to do just eye tutorials using it just because there's probably going to be four bajillion of them already or will be or are, you know, um, yeah, so I think I'm going to do that, use the Naked, Urban Decay Naked Heat. I'm so confused with that palette just because, um, I feel like it's going to be one of those palettes that gets really influenced by... The opinion of others gets really influenced by the opinion of vloggers and because it's a palette that is so divided, um, I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to film a review on it and not because like, Ooh, whatever, there's, you know, I don't want people to, to leave mean comments. No, it's not about that. It's just, it's kind of one of those where would I really be doing you a service by reviewing the palette if um the opinions are so skewed so basically like i could totally absolutely love it which i do and then you go buy it based on my opinion and you're like danny you're insane i hated it and it's like oh it's one of those that's gonna be really you really probably should try it for yourself okay i'm gonna set my face with the very last little bit of my laura mercier translucent loose i actually bought a backup of this a few weeks ago when i went to the galleria mall with my friend paola that's also part of that vlog that I told you um, about where I got my tan. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's part of that vlog. I got I had to get a backup of it because I use it so much. And you know the funny thing is, I like other setting powders a lot, like the Cover Effects one. It was in my favorites for a few a few times in a row. Um, the Cover Effects one is really good. And, um, which other translucent powder do I use a lot? Oh, the NARS. You guys remember the NARS? But some of you guys told me that it was, it got discontinued. So I actually have a few backups of it. 
a few backups of a whole jug, like jug of powder. Why? I don't know, you guys. <sighs> Sun help. Um, anyway, so a lot of you guys told me that it got discontinued. Um, so I just don't use it anymore, in case it did. I should probably look into that to see if it actually did get discontinued. That was my favorite, but that one, you guys, if you use flash, and depending on the foundation or like the primer that you're using or if you're wearing sunscreen or whatever, the flashback, I don't even, I can't even tell you. There's like degrees of flashback. There's like, oh yeah, you know, the normal flashback, that like that white cast or you get like the raccoon eyes where you're like reverse raccoon eyes where your eyes are like bright white. There's like that normal kind of flashback and then there's flashback. This one looks like you're a phantom. It's crazy. Anyway, I'm going to do my brows off camera and I'll be right back. All right, brows done. Now we're gonna do eyes, and I honestly have no idea or inspiration as to what I'm gonna do. I'm just putting on an additional layer of powder, just a really light one, that we'll wipe off later once we, you know, we make a mess. Um, then I'm gonna go in with my 778 Delium Tools and ounce. You guys remember the first time I used this color, I was like, holy shimmer. It's a, it's a pretty glowy ivory shade. So if you guys don't like that like glowy brow bone, you're not gonna like this shade. But it's very smooth and it's very pigmented and I think it's very lovely. It's kind of doing glowy, uh, it's doing glowy really elegantly for a, a brow bone. It's not gonna look like silver, you know what I mean? Anyway, so what else should we do? I kinda wanna do a really dark, a really dark uh, eye. But then I gotta go out. All right, let's see. We're gonna do Chaser. That's the second lightest shade in the palette. And that's going to be our transition. Um, and I'm gonna use a Sigma E, is it E40? You would think it's one of the brushes that I use the most. I would have already memorized it. It's an E40, and a lot of you guys ask me what the um, like teal colored handle brushes are. I actually have like a bajillion different brands. Um, <laughs> they loop me in by the color, but then I end up liking them a lot, so it just works out that it's awesome that they're that color, you know? <laughs> But yeah, this is a Sigma E40, but this is when the E40 was actually a good brush before it turned crappy and they mass produced it and now it sucks. Um, it's the one that comes in the in the kit. And it was actually a birthday gift from my best friend Sam. So I don't know what I'm gonna do when this brush dies. Then we're gonna take that same color chaser and an E55 and run that along the lower lash line. So I've been thinking about ways that I could um, exercise because I've never been a fan of exercise. I mean, I'll run and I'm pretty good at it, but it gets boring, you know, not to mention that I already have like rickety joints. So um, I can run on a treadmill and it's okay. I can also run on the street and it's okay, but you guys, it's so like, if you run on the street, you need these types of shoes. If you run on a treadmill, you need those types of shoes. You know, it's good for your joints, it's bad for your joints, it's, it's this, it's that, it's, it's, it's a whole science. I just want to exercise. <laughs> so, I was looking into Pilates, and I think Pilates is one of those um, workouts that I would actually really enjoy, but I don't know if there's any around my area, and I would hate to have to drive to like trendy Dallas just to do Pilates. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go drive 30 minutes for a 30 minute workout and then drive 30 minutes back. But I am really interested in it. So I wonder if there's any like Pilates gyms around here or gym facilities that offer Pilates. I think I'd be really good at that, don't you think? I feel like Pilates would be one of those workouts where you don't feel like you're really working out but you're actually really working out. I don't know, I'm not very educated when it comes to exercising. Okay, then I'm gonna take the color Lumbre. Oh snap, try and get all bilingual. Lumbre and apply that to the lid. Uh, it's a really pretty, it's like, almost like a rose gold slash garnet um, shade. Apply that to the lid. I've also been thinking about like what I like to do and this was kind of born uh, after I went on a date with this guy 
and he was like, well, what do you like to do? Like, what are the activities that you like to do? And I, you know, my answer was so lame. Like, honestly, I never feel like I'm put on the spot. Like, I can weasel my way out of any conversation or into any conversation or, you know, whatever. Like, conversation, socializing, that's easy for me. But when he asked me that, honestly, like, my answer was, I'm at home and I'm working on YouTube stuff or I'm with my boys. Um, I'm taking care of my dogs. I'm driving to um, practice or um, running errands or I have lunch with like, you know, one of my four friends here in Dallas um, or I go on a date. Like that's literally my life. But he's like, well, what do you like to do? Like, how do you stress relief? Do you, um, you know, go hiking? Or do you go swimming? Or do you, are, do you go on a lake? Or are you a water sports person? You go camping. I literally don't do anything. And it kind of made me feel like I'm half living. That sounds very dramatic. That sounds like super, super hyperbolic, but you guys know how I am. But honestly, like the deep death core of that conversation, it really made me feel like I'm half living. Like I'm literally just doing what I need to do to get by through the day, but I'm not carving out that time to find out what I like to do, what's fun for me, what enriches my life or my brain or makes me feel like an active participant in my own life. Have you guys ever thought about that? Like reflect on your life and what you do and how you fill your time. Are you doing things that are enriching your life? That are allowing you to live, not just exist? I don't have anything like that. And so I started to think of what are all the things that I've been curious to try? Are there any things in my life that I've been curious to try, that I haven't tried, that have always sparked my interest but I just haven't done it? What are they? And then when I figure out what they are, would I do it by myself? Because who else am I gonna do it with? You know what I mean? Like that's, would you do that? Would you do something by yourself? Okay, now I'm gonna go in with well, this is a tough one. I'm gonna go in with Cayenne, that's this color here, and I'm gonna run that on the crease. So yeah, so look, look into your life. Like take a step outside of yourself for a second and look back into your life and what you do every day. So what are, what are the, your objectives every day? Oh, I get up, I work out, I go to work, I come home and I make dinner, I do laundry, I take care of my kids or whatever. Do you do anything else for yourself? Like, um, are you a part of some club or are you, um, I don't know, a paper crafter or uh, do you cycle? Are there any things like that that you just do strictly because you enjoy them and you like them? for yourself. Not because your doctor said you need to lower your cholesterol or not because you know you're trying to talk to that Hawkeye in the cycling club or whatever. Just just because you're like, oh I actually actually enjoy doing that and I want to do it. Whether it's with you or anyone else, I just I enjoy doing it. So I haven't I don't think I have anything like that. You know what I mean? Like I don't think I've ever I've ever had anything like that 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 I really like to do or that I've been curious to try. I don't know. And then once I figure it out, would I be willing to do it alone? I've never been someone that doesn't like to be alone. In fact, I really value my, my um, solitude, you know, my independence, my solitude. I love being alone. Like, it, do it doesn't bother me. But those are things that you could really enjoy, you know, with someone else, whether it's a friend or a partner. Am I getting like super emo deep right now? I feel like I am. And what, what's going on here? What is this? Holy blending, holy non-blending rather. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I feel like I need to do like, um, like an explorative research on what would Danny like? What would I really enjoy doing? And I, have, I also have this complex where I like need to be good at everything that I try. So, um, you know, I, I hate to do something where I feel like, oh, I'm not good at it because then I'll have to like want, then I'll have to like do it and do it and do it so, till I get good at it. 
even if I don't enjoy it. <laughs> okay, so now I took the color Sauced. That's the third palette in the in the the third color in the palette, and I'm just using that to kind of soften that craziness. I'm gonna go back in with Lumbre, and I'm gonna just um, kind of re-emphasize the color because sometimes when you apply a crease color, it blends away. And it doesn't blend away the actual shade, it just blends away like the metallic part of it, or like the satiny. This is a pretty metallic color. Okay, then I'm gonna go in with, and I can't decide which one of these pencils I wanna use. I don't even know if they're brown. These are from ColourPop. That one's brown. I'll just use that one. Uh, it's called Call Me. I think I've used it before. So I'm going to apply Call Me, and try and stay in frame over here. I'm gonna apply Call Me to the lower lash line. Then I'm gonna take that Sigma E55 and the color, uh, let's do En Fuego. That's the third from the right. And run that along the top of the pencil. And then I'm gonna take that same pencil and I'm going to put it on the tight line. I feel like I should do wing liner. This would be one of those um, eye looks that would look really great with a brown wing liner. I know a lot of you guys have asked me before when I tell you guys that I love brown liquid liners, like how you would use that versus black. Um, I like brown ones because I feel like they're not as harsh. So um, you still get the same effect, but it's a little bit more soft on the eyes. And so with an eye look like this, with like the orangey, like the warm browns, it'll enhance the shades instead of drawing attention just to the wing liner. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the um, MAC 217 and the color Ashes, um, and I'm just going to do a light bump in there and apply that right on the outer edge. Just the littlest bit. Okay, I'm going to spare you the 35 minutes it's going to take me to do my um, four eyelashes. I'm going to use the Rimmel Lash Accelerator off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so eyes are done. Now we're going to finish our face and our lips. And for face, um, I want to do a really peachy blush, uh, preferably maybe even borderline orange. Yeah, I said it. Um, let's see got going on here oh holy metallic not that one uh, is that too much that might be a little too much huh oh, since when has that ever stopped us then there's also this one I can't think I'm gonna do that one from flower beauty man I think I'm getting a runny nose what the snatch oh, you know when you like think you're getting sick you think you're getting sick you think you're getting sick and then all of a sudden boom it's like full-on illness I think that's going to hit me later today. Yay! Or there's this one too from Too Faced. Apparently, peach blushes are my favorite because I can't narrow it down. What's up with this accent too? Like, where did that come from? Um, okay. So, we're going to go with, ooh, that's pretty, Holy Intensity. And then let's see this one. Ooh, I can't decide. I think I'm going to go with... These two are basically the same color. This is I Will Always Love You from Too Faced, and then this is Flower Beauty Flower Pot in uh, Peach Primrose. But the Too Faced one has like a glisten and glow satiny type finish. The other one's matte. So my eyes... I feel like I could still carry some shimmer. You know what I mean? Like I, I feel like my look isn't that intense where I couldn't carry some of the weight of additional shimmeriness. Alright, let's do this guys. We're going to do I Will Always Love You from Too Faced. And uh, hopefully we're not going to get too deep into conversation where I scare myself with my blush application again. Do you guys remember that last time when I did the, the red lips? Oh, someone said they actually enjoyed like the celebrity inspired Get Ready With Me. Now, that was total like coincidence that it was celebrity inspired and I, I've thought about starting a series where I'm like oh let's do a celebrity inspired get ready with me but because I'm awful at like actually duplicating looks 
Like, the intention is there. The good intention is there. Does it always pan out? Hardly ever. <laughs> so I was like, that might turn into almost like a comedy series on my channel. Um, so, yeah, definitely thinking about it, but I don't know. You guys know. I'm not very good at, like, really copying some looks, or rather, them actually turning out the way they're supposed to. Anyway... How did this turn into like a downer conversation? Should I do bronzer? I don't think I want to. Okay, and then highlighter. So for highlighter, um, I didn't do bronzer or contour, whatever you want to call it. So maybe I can carry more highlighter on my face. Why do I keep saying carry like if it's a, an expression of some sort? Why do I even have this? I don't like this. I really need to declutter all this other stuff. I'm gonna use the Kevin Aquan Candlelight, Candlelit, Candlelight Highlighter because it gives a really natural look and I am going out. I'm always self-conscious, like I don't care what's on my eyes or how I do my face, but I'm always self-conscious of how extreme my highlighter is. I feel like highlighter is one of those things that's like the only thing that I'm probably a little more self-aware of you know, when I'm going to go out. Because if you're outdoors and you're wearing a highlighter that has like sparkles in it, girl, you're going to be shining. It's going to be reflecting some light. And for lips. Holy, I have a lot of lip colors, new lip colors that I haven't used. Let's see what we got over here. All right, we're going to do something a little weird. Because we're all about that experimentation life. Okay, that sounded really bad. <laughs> So Urban Decay launched two new eye pencils. These are the Glide On Eye Pencils, 24-7, two different shades with the release of their Naked Heat. Now, you guys know how I feel about these like burnt brown orangey colors. So I'm thinking I could use it as a lip liner. Is that weird? Okay, maybe a little bit, but should we do it? All right, I'm willing to put my life, my lip life at risk for you guys. Oh man. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? Like, is this really an eyeliner? Like, that's kind of weird, right? For an eyeliner? Anyway. What's actually weird is that I'm doing this. <laughs> It's an eyeliner. I mean, no one has to know. And if they do, they're gonna believe how much street cred we have because we push the boundaries and live our life on the edge. What can I say? I kind of was tempted to top it off with a lip gloss, but I kind of really like it. It reminds me of Hitchhike, you know, the lipstick from Urban Decay. But I did get these Becca uh, Liquid Crystal Lip Toppers. You guys, stop changing the name of products that already exist, right? Like, it's a lip gloss. Um, all these, like, lip transformers, lip toppers, lip, it's a gloss. Um, and so I kind of want to do it, but I also hear that it's a little windy outside. Do you guys hate that, like, windy lip gloss life? Like, that problem? It's kind of a big problem, but... Ooh! Oh, okay, good. That smells really good. I feel like that's way too opaque and it'll really change the dynamic of what's happening here right now. So, maybe I won't. I don't know, should I? You guys. Oh, snap. You like how I was flustered for like five seconds and then I just did it anyway? I'm telling you. I live my life on the edge, you guys. kind of cute. Yeah. I mean, I liked it the way it was before better, but can't go back now. Anyway, so that is it for this get ready with me. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Do you guys like my sleeveless blazer? Isn't that cute? I got it at Zara uh, not too long ago. I'll try and link it for you guys. And then this is like a $5 tank top from Target. Anyway, uh, anything that I can possibly list and link in the description box below will be there, like this awesome nail polish. This is uh, Porter Miami from KL Polish. Isn't that stunning? So far, this foundation is giving me all the feels. I just wish it was a better match. 
but it's really good. Anyway, I can't really say goodbye to you guys. Like, what am I doing? You know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, or learned something, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys!